In today's video, we're messing around with a telephoto lens on the Juin Crane 2S. I don't have any other lenses with me in this park because I wanted to make it a challenge. There's no cheating, no slow motion, 24 frames per second. Let me show you how to control this setup on the Crane 2S. So here's what we're working with. All right, so here's a Crane 2S. I have my 1X2 from Insta360 hooked up to get some BTS shots. Here's the clearance, barely no clearance, all right? It's also really important that you know how to properly balance this camera and this lens combo on this gimbal. You can see how well it's balanced and it just looks great. By the way, notice how the roll motor is dropped. If you don't know how to do this on your Crane 2S, I did a tutorial on this, so check out the card right now above, click on it and watch that video because handling this gimbal is a little bit different with this type of setup. Now to balance your gimbal with this type of lens, it's definitely trickier than traditional lenses. For example, on the 70 to 200 G Master, we need to use the mounting bracket on the bottom of this lens, not the quarter 20 inch port on your camera. This is how we achieve perfect balance. Plus the lens weighs more than the camera, so we don't want to stress the body of the camera too much. I like to start off with the plate being in the center but to help balancing, you might have to adjust this later on down the road. After the quick release has been mounted, attach it to your camera and then attach your lens camera combo to your gimbal. Remember, make sure that your camera accessories such as your lens hood, battery and memory card are attached. I strongly advise you to not attach any camera straps or loose items to your camera because this will shift during operation. I made a ton of balancing tutorials on gimbals, but to really break it down for this non-traditional setup, basically you want to start off with the tilt axis. There's two different adjustments. First, we're gonna start off with the quick release plate. You will have to loosen up the tensioner. And meanwhile, while you're doing this, you also wanna make sure that your axis locks are locked except for the tilt axis. This will help you balance your gimbal faster. You either want to push your quick release forward or backward. You want your camera to remain centered without dropping forward or backward. Once your position is down, your camera should remain center. However, it may not be perfect. Don't worry, we're going to be using another tilt adjustment. Next, there's another tilt adjustment. At this time, your quick release plate should be tightened up. This other tilt adjustment will move your camera up or down. Now, usually to get the tilt axis balanced properly, I advise pointing the camera lens combo pointed up vertically. But because we're using such a large lens camera combo, this will not be possible. So we will not get 100% perfect balance. You want to adjust the vertical position up or down just about until your camera stops drooping forward or backward. Again, this is the second part of the tilt adjustment process. After you got that balanced, you want to lock up that axis and then work with the roll axis. The roll axis is very straightforward. It can either move to the left or to the right. You want to get it perfect so that the camera remains centered without leaning to the right or to the left. Once that's balanced, lock up that axis and then move to the pan axis. The pan axis is the most overlooked axis on a gimbal. People completely forget to balance this and they usually have problems when shooting in vortex mode. So I strongly suggest that you make sure that your pan adjustment is properly done. Loosen up that axis and either push the arm forward or backward. You want to tilt your gimbal over to the left or to the right and make sure that it doesn't swing around. As soon as your gimbal stops swinging around, that means that your pan axis is balanced. Remember to use both hands. Tiny adjustments are very important. This is what can make your gimbal perfectly balanced or perfectly unbalanced. Now, after your rig is completely balanced, you are ready to adjust your motor power settings. This is extremely important and I did a full comprehensive tutorial right up here. Luckily, with the latest firmware with the Crane 2S, the auto adjustment option is very accurate. So once your camera system is balanced, go into the gimbal menu and go into motor calibration and select auto. This will make your camera do a funny dance and don't worry about the weird vibration noises that you may hear. This whole thing is a part of the calibration process with your gimbal. So just wait until it's done and if it fails, just do it again. If that doesn't work, you have two other options such as adjusting these motor power settings yourself by using the custom option 
or you can use the pre-programmed presets by Juintech, which is under the level option. Here we are with our first shot and it's just a simple slider shot. Very important that you get your form right. So we're gonna start off from right to left and we're gonna be using foreground such as this tree right here to my left. So sometimes you're gonna probably have to go into manual focus and you're gonna see why in the next shot after this one. So don't worry if we lose focus, we can always do this shot again. But remember, you wanna keep your hands tight on the gimbal, very strong grip and do the crisscross method when you walk. What's really unique about telephoto lenses is that they seem like everything is shot in slow motion when actually it's shot in real time. I'm using a ton of different foreground here and the subject is actually that stage that you see in front of me. So now I'm going back and here we go. That's a nice solid shot. So here's a really good situation of a ton of foreground and an epic shot of this AIG building. We're messing around with foreground right here and we have this tree off to the left of me. Now we are going to be shooting this in a manual focus because when you're messing around with foreground, it's going to confuse your camera if you're using autofocus. And right now I'm at 70 millimeter. I'm gonna go all the way up to 200 millimeter and you can use focus peaking to get that proper focus. All right, also I'm gonna be shooting this in lock mode because I am at 200 millimeter and lock mode is the most stable with the least amount of jitters for this shot. Now here I go. This is how the shot's gonna come out. This is real time, not in slow motion. All right, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. And here we go. Here comes the tree, another tree, boom. You see how good that looks? Also check out the form as I walk, crisscross method on the legs, knees slightly bent, and check out the grip on my gimbal. Very tight grip with two hands, one right under the other. All right, so I'm completely wiped out, I'm out of breath. Uh, this is definitely a workout, and uh, if you wanna build that arm strength, you really need to work on that forearm grip and just biceps and shoulders. Those are really gonna help you make these types of shots happen, especially with this kind of weight. Leg day doesn't hurt either. A few things that you need to really take away from today's video is the form. How do you hold the gimbal? What shooting modes should you be in? A lot of the time it's either pan follow or lock mode because those modes are the path of least resistance. This is where the gimbal is gonna fight you the least. Also, custom motor settings are important if auto mode does not work with that motor torque. And honestly, if you guys do your practicing, you will get these shots right. Even in today's video, what I just showed you took me a few tries to get it done right. And by the way, since I'm really proud of my setup today when I captured my BTS, I wanna talk a little bit more about it. I'm actually shooting with the Go 2 right now from Insta360. I also have my X2, which is right here. It's mounted on the selfie stick. I brought a little tripod on the bottom here. I also mount it to the side of the Crane 2S with this Hollyland uh, Magic Arm. And uh, yeah, honestly guys, this is a great setup for BTS, for your regular shoots. The Crane 2S is my favorite gimbal currently and I absolutely love using it. It has the power, it has the mobility, and it has the smoothness that every gimbal needs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope today's video has helped you out. And if it has, please give it a like and subscribe with those notifications turned on and I'll see you in another one. Peace.